Welcome to Unit 3, Transpersonal Psychology and Health and Wellness. This unit will in many ways be a continuation of the previous one on spirituality and world views. We have already determined that transpersonal psychology, research and practice is interested in modes of consciousness and spiritual practices. Now we consider some of the approaches to transpersonal health and wellness. We will be looking at contemporary Western medicine, as well as Eastern religions and indigenous and shamanic practices as they relate to Western transpersonal healing and integrative medicine. We will also review some of the contemporary transpersonal healing modalities that reflect both the ancient practices and contemporary approaches. And lastly, we will touch on ecological healing or deep ecology and eco-psychology. To begin with, though, what do we mean by health and wellness? Let's look at some definitions before we begin thinking about the art and science of transpersonal healing. We often take the concept of health for granted, but you will find some interesting variations here. I found these on the internet for the most part. The World Health Organization's definition of health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity the Alliance Institute for Integrative Medicine. We view wellness as much more than just a state of physical health. It also encompasses emotional stability, clear thinking, the ability to love, create, embrace change, exercise intuition, and experience a continuing sense of spirituality. I might add that could be a continuing sense of the transpersonal. Our mission is for all who enter our doors to take one step closer to this state of vibrant health and well-being. Dorland's Medical Dictionary definition is an optimum state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Closer to home are Health Canada's 12 determinants of health, income and social status, employment, education, social environments, physical environments, healthy child development, personal health practices, ongoing in other words, and coping skills, psychologically, health services, social support networks, biology and genetic endowment, gender and culture. This is pretty comprehensive. It pretty much covers the entire psychosocial, emotional, physical and spiritual realms. And here's an interesting quote from the web I found, the University of Waterloo report on primary health care. A PHC orientation to health services delivery recognizes individual, family, community, and population experiences of health and illness, as well as the ways in which health and health care are situated within specific social, historical, and political contexts. So the orientation to PHC is situated within shifting paradigms of health and illness, particularly in Canada. And lastly, this is uh, probably a very appropriate uh, quote I found on the web from the University of Buffalo's Wellness Department. It very much includes everything that we've discussed already. And I quote, wellness is the conscious development of the whole self. Embarking on a wellness journey is a process of searching for the appropriate tools to make you a healthier and happier human being, plus discovering your own effective methods to use these tools for continued growth and development. So it's recognizing that each person is very unique. As there is a great variety on all aspects of life, there are also countless ways to cultivate yourself on an ever-changing path of wellness. Moving down here, they now recognize eight dimensions or essential life areas which collectively together comprise the wellness of all human beings. Spiritual, emotional, intellectual, physical, cultural, occupational, social, and environment. That's fairly inclusive and that very much reflects everything we've been speaking of thus far. We're going to keep the eight dimensions of health in mind as we first look at contemporary Western medicine as it slowly evolves towards a more transpersonal model of health and wellness. 
you will see the influences of Asian and indigenous healing traditions and the impact that they have had on current Western health models. In fact, in some of the previous definitions we reviewed, the influence is already there. Keeping the eight dimensions of wellness in mind, we're going to be looking at transpersonal healing influences. But first of all, we'll begin with Western medicine and its secular research, some of which we've done already through consciousness research. We will move on then to the more traditional Asian medicines and indigenous medicines. Starting with Western medicine and research, most of us are now familiar with mind-body medicine, at least intellectually or theoretically. Mind-body medicine is also often referred to as integrative medicine or holistic medicine. We have come to understand and accept that the mind and body are not separate. They are an integrated system. Concerning the relationship between mind and body, we do make the underlying assumption now that negative stress, and this is as opposed to positive stress, such as putting your muscles under stress when lifting something heavy, negative stress underlies a lot of illness, or at least contributes to illness. Stress factors come from all eight dimensions of health. Therefore, any and all of these can be a part of the root cause of illness. Transpersonal healing recognizes this, and it is a process of integrated healing that includes this multidimensional pathway. Transpersonal healing approaches are often focused in the psycho-emotional and mental realms of these eight dimensions, the mind-to-body relationship. Often our mental health can be a result of our social relationships, the physical environment we are choosing to live in, our employment, whether it's fulfilling or not, our family relationships, are there many conflicts there, and our spiritual or transpersonal selves, have we stretched ourselves into a new peak domains, for example. All this is intimately connected to our stress levels and therefore affects our body and our mind. All eight dimensions of health are considered when examining illness on a psychological, emotional and spiritual level, whether it is physical or mental illness. In the West, we have been examining the relationship of the mind to the body through the lens of our well-established evidence-based medicine. What is evidence-based medicine, though? I found this definition on the Internet. Evidence-based medicine is the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. The practice of evidence-based medicine means integrating individual clinical expertise with the best available external clinical evidence from systematic research. By individual clinical expertise, we mean the proficiency and judgment that individual clinicians acquire through clinical experience and clinical practice. So we are combining our rigorous research with our clinical observation in situ. Western researchers began to discover, through the lens of this scientific inquiry, what Eastern yogis from ancient times across all religions already experientially and intuitively understood and practiced. That is, the body and mind are fully integrated. There is no separation. As we know, to understand that theoretically is one thing. To fully practice and experience it is a completely different situation one that takes a great deal of practice, patience, and is dependent on each individual's unique capacities in that regard. The 1960s decade was a pivotal time in Western civilization. It was the decade when sociocultural restrictions loosened and we sought new avenues of creative expression and innovation in business, arts, and sciences. We also developed new values by questioning the status quo. A great expansion into understanding the body-mind relationship brought us as a Western society into transpersonal ways of thinking regarding health and wellness. Previous to the 1960s, 
Western medicine often considered body and mind as separate units, with symptoms being treated after the fact and little preventative measures taken. Slowly in the 1960s, a new field emerged called psychoneuroimmunology. This field considers the relationship between the nervous system, the immune system, psychological processes, and our health. The late psychiatrist George Solomon was a pioneer in what came to be known as this new field, psychoneuroimmunology. We probably have heard the expression many times, and we may personally know it quite well. But the saying goes, if you are mentally stressed out, then your immune system is depressed, and you are more susceptible, therefore, to physical illness. We now take this very much for granted, but up until the 1960s, Western science had not really substantiated this concept through rigorous empirical methodology. The quote that you're looking at below this on the screen now is from the website of UCLA's Cousin Center for Psychoneuroimmunology. It was named after the well-known journalist and author and professor Norman Cousins, who was very interested in this field. The quote says, the quest for proof that a patient's psychological approach to illness could have an effect on biological states and health. Norman Cousins was particularly interested in this and in the impact of positive emotions and attitudes such as purpose, determination, love, hope, faith, the will to live, and festivity. Many other scientists focused their research on this new connection of consciousness and health, or mind and body health. The new discoveries of biophysical scientists and physicists were developing around the same time that transpersonal psychology and consciousness studies expanded. A few contemporary key players in the transpersonal health and wellness field are the following people. Dr. Herbert Benson, is from the Harvard Medical School and he was the author of the groundbreaking research he later coined the relaxation response. Dr. Benson also founded the Mind Body Institute at Harvard Medical School. He practiced transcendental meditation, a method created by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, although according to the website, and I quote, he is maintaining a neutral objective position, not aligning with any particular meditation organization. Close quote. In the picture on the screen, he is with the Dalai Lama's physician at the time. Uh, many of you are aware that the Dalai Lama has been very interested in the studies that follow physical response through the meditation process. Dr. Deepak Chopra, many of you know, is an endocrinologist and has been instrumental in developing mind-body medicine. Aside from his Western training and broad popularity, Dr. Chopra has a spiritual practice that is sourced from his native country of India, namely yogic studies, Buddhism, and Ayurvedic medicine. Please visit his website and watch a four-minute video by Dr. Chopra speaking on quantum physics and the new healing paradigm. Dr. Chopra is a natural lecturer who speaks with great clarity. Another scientist very interested in transpersonal healing methods is Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is a cell biologist. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles. Dr. Lipton is very interested in many new energy medicine techniques, particularly EFT, which is called Emotional Freedom Technique. You can visit his website and find out a lot more about it. Dr. Candace Pert became a major influence in this field after she published the revolutionary book, Molecules of Emotion, the Scientific Basis Behind Mind-Body Medicine. There are too many researchers, scientists, and psychologists who have devoted their research lives to the new field of mind-body medicine to cover adequately here. Western medicine's new direction in health and wellness has been deeply connected with and parallels the development of transpersonal psychology and transpersonal healing.
I'd like to briefly consider the recent and interesting area of transpersonal healing practices that work within the parameters of what is called energy medicine, often referred to as quantum healing. Quantum healing is influenced in a very general way by quantum physics, which deals with the subject of matter and energy and our growing understanding of how consciousness interacts with both. It has been a great stimulant in contemporary health and healing research and practice. Most of the above-mentioned contemporary scientists that we just discussed have been influenced to a great extent by the interface of the new quantum paradigm of thinking with ancient and contemporary consciousness practice. This includes transpersonal psychologists. It is felt that quantum physics has helped us to understand the ancient yogic and indigenous healing practices that seem to transcend what we call consensus reality and ordinary consciousness. You find that, for example, in shamanic practice. As this new understanding grows, however, it also holds conflicts and controversies and is fraught with the possibility of non-scientists misinterpreting the scientific data. I have included a short extract in the articles folder from an article by Larry Dossie, MD, on this very issue. It, it concerns our use of language and the confusion and complexities of our understanding of such words as energy and quantum. An early pioneer in this newer phase of consciousness work was physicist Dr. Fritjof Capra, who wrote the seminal book, The Tao of Physics, an exploration of the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism. He wrote this in 1975. Dr. Capra has since concentrated his efforts in the ecology movement. You can visit his website at this location. Another dimension to this new paradigm of thinking, which when we think about it is really ancient wisdom, are new transpersonal healing practices which approach health from the perspective of body consciousness first. So again, we're not thinking about emotions being held in the mind only. We are seeing the connection between mind and body and understanding that our physical bodies can actually hold within them uh, emotional patterns. Allowing our physical bodies through expressive therapies to release held-in emotional patterns that are unconscious in nature a good deal of the time that have, and that have accumulated since birth is the function of many of these physical therapies. In your article titled Body Wisdom, the author Mirka Naster refers to these systems as convergence systems, which combine both physical and emotional healing. Some of these therapies you may have heard of, perhaps some of them you partake in. The Rubenfeld Synergy Method it combines physical touch, listening, verbal expression, breathing patterns, and more to gain more access to the emotions that are stored in the body. Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy combines yoga asanas with therapeutic verbal exchange. Hakomi Integrative Somatics explores the physiological and psychological habits of the body. Jin Shin Do is another acupressure process for the psychophysical rebalancing and releasing. And the Rosen Method moves from, con from a contracted body defense to a more open natural response. These are just some of the therapies uh, that are out there. There are many, many more. All physical therapies on some level can help to access psycho-emotional and even spiritual patterns that may be unconsciously available in the body. This can happen intentionally between client and therapist or as a spontaneous release process. I encourage you to go for a few treatments in a contemporary healing method just to explore your own potential and discover where your current held-in boundaries are in the physical body. This is the end of part one of transpersonal healing looking at the background to Western mind-body medicine. I ask you now to move on to part two which will look at the traditional Asian medicines and indigenous medicines.